<laughs> Hello and welcome to HD Movie Talk. I am your host, who knows the most. I'm Dean's Beans, and as always, I'm joined by a wonderful man, uh, Fluffy Duffy, who has another name, which I always forget. Hello. Hi, I was going to say, you don't know the most, and then I remembered, oh, I literally had to ask you like several questions before we started about how to do this podcast so it's like you know, yeah yeah how to do but i like forgot to speak and everything it was crazy are you gonna say your other name that i can't remember oh yeah uh peyton jb yeah anyway uh welcome back <laughs> well, why do we do so many jokes that are for no one <laughs> why this why do we do so many jokes that are just for each other we're like oh good joke ourselves <laughs> this is just um, us why do we release this we... <laughs> we have fun we do okay we're doing this is episode two in a series called looking back where we'd like take a superhero tv show or maybe not a superhero tv show who knows and we watch a season of it like revisit a season of this and we're like oh how does this look with hindsight um because you know what they say hindsight is 2020 wow um the show we're watching is from 2021 uh, uh, darn it in episode one we looked back at one division and now we are looking back at peacemaker which might seem apt considering all the james gunning about that is going on at the moment how do we feel about, how do we what i think we have a similar opinion on james gunn right now but what is our opinion He's a great guy, and I'm happy he's in charge of DC, and he can burn it all down, and I wouldn't care. Me too. Um, I I did a video. I did a video talking yeah. about how the decisions that, that James Gunn is making is actually for the better, and not many people people like that take, but it's true. It's well, true. Like, people enjoy to hate things. That yes, I enjoy to hate things. Oh, I... you do. <laughs> Jared Leto. Oh no, I like him now. I forget. That's my character. Oh, I right, like yeah, right, right, right. Um, that's 2023. Um, Dean's beans for you. I'm in love with <laughs> Jared Leto. That, was that your New Year resolution to learn to like Jared Leto? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So Peacemaker. Uh, what did you think about it at the time of release? At the time of release, it was the awesome. greatest thing. You, yeah. Um, uh, I remember being obsessed with it. Everybody loved Vigilante. Everybody loved the intro. Um, oh. it, it, it was great when we first came out. Like had, Everybody loved it. I had a really good way to start this podcast, and I forgot to do it. Um, Can we just gonna... pretend we're starting this podcast again? Sure, go ahead, buddy. Well, hello, welcome to HG Movie Talk. I'm your host, Dean Speeds. As always, I'm joined by my good friend, Harlan. Hey, Harlan, I've got a really important question for you. I don't want to taste it. Do you really want to, <laughs> you really want to taste it? <laughs> Honestly, I was watching this show and I had the thought to do that. And I was like, oh, dude, you're funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, give me, give me, give me some time to think. <laughs> That's a different show. Different superhero show. Uh, anyway. Uh, yeah, I, I felt about the same way of Peacemaker. I was like, this is just you know so much good stuff there and i'm not going to talk about what i thought on a rewatch yet but what we'd like to do is we like to go for episode by episode and give our thoughts on the episodes and what i liked about the um episodes here is that they feel like episodes of a tv show they do you know which which nowadays is weirdly a lot to ask from a tv show strangely a bit like Peacemaker found itself in a pretty unique situation where, like, in the beginning of the show, there was no stakes. Like, in WandaVision, we know what the stakes kind of are. In, mm. But, like, with this one, like, James Gunn literally could have made it about anything, and we would have it would have been good. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, who... Like, Peacemaker's a good character in the Suicide Squad, but no one was like, oh, I need to see more of this guy. Really? No, not not really. And we that's all no, like we that's, want to, but no, that, that's like no insult. But like, if they were like we're doing Bloodsport or we're doing Ratcatcher or we're doing Polka Dot Man, I think it would have got the same reception of people being like, "Oh yeah, I'd like to see that." Yeah, for sure. Uh, I don't. I don't think anything was about Peacemaker. Well, I'm like, yeah, we need to see more of this guy, and I think that's what made this so interesting. If he could have done anything, and he was like, "Let's explore this guy," um, from right. 
Um, I think we're also doing this at a good time because it was like yesterday, James Gunn just casually said that he wrote a third of a DC TV show that hasn't been announced yet. Mm. No, I didn't. I saw that. Oh, wait, did I see that? So he's currently writing a DC TV show which is yet to be announced. So who knows what that will be? They did they announce season two of Beastmaker? They did, but who knows if it's still happening at this point, you know? Oh well, what I saw was from what James Gunn posted on his story that DC Studios DCU eight to ten year slate will be partly announced this month. Yes. Confirmed DC yes. Studios. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then yesterday he did. Yeah. Anyway, should we go episode by episode? Yes. So, episode one, they're all puns. This is called A uh, Whole New World, but it's W H I R L E D. Um, oh, man. Peacemaker um, uh, wakes up in hospital and he gets to leave. He meets the team who will be spending the rest of the show as he and he reunites with his dad. Um, one of the members of the team, Adebayo, is revealed to be Amanda Waller's daughter. And at the very end, um, Chris hooks up with a girl who tries to kill him and he meets his first butterfly. I have kind of a hot take. Mm-hmm. This mm-hmm. is an extremely strong pilot yeah. and I, I think agree. it's the best episode in the show. I disagree, but we'll get to that. That's a question we'll ask at the end and I have very strong opinions about the best episode. I... I just, yeah, like, I think it's a very strong opening and I think it's got really interesting stuff there, but I think this is still kind of the Suicide Squad Peacemaker, who I don't dislike at all. But right. it's still kind of the Peacemaker lacking the depth. And when the depth comes in later on in the series, that's when I'm like, yeah, this show is great. Well, a part of why I appreciate doing this series is um, having hindsight and when I was watching the like, even like the first like ten minutes where he's like escapes the hospital, mm-hmm. I was like, I, you know, I had an idea about how good this show was, but I really forgot like how funny yeah. it actually was. It's so like not like funny. Sorry, I do this too. Touch, uh, part like She Hulk, mm-hmm. funny, but it's yeah. not peacemaking funny. No, I, I'll get to the humor. In a bit, but yeah, this show is very funny. Um, and it, 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 like, it was like the, from the John Cena fighting in his tidy whities to and the dance in his tidy whities. Yeah, and to him, the you know, tidy whities and the the the, 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 the balls. I mean, uh, the helmet. <laughs> uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, who said that? <laughs> yeah. Do you want to talk about episode episode two? Sure. Episode I like two. this episode, episode poo. <laughs> um, because poo is funny. Nothing to do with the quality of the episode. And number two? Episode. Number two? It's yeah. Oh, no, actually, two. I want to talk about episode one a bit more and just the introduction to his dad and them just sitting oh. at the kitchen table and he's, like, trying to relate to his dad and he's like, hey, dad. And, he, and you get the setup of him, like, really trying to get his dad's approval and his dad just being the worst. And I think they do such a good job of quickly like just establishing that this guy is the worst without being like, oh, he's the leader of a bunch of white supremacists and he is the reason his son's dead. And like, they don't, don't get into any of that awful stuff, but you're still like, this guy's the worst and I hate him. Right. But why didn't Peacemaker just say his bullet literally went through mine? Like, why didn't he just say that? You know, he he, he was just feeling a bit demasculated by his awful dad. I know, but I feel like that's a pretty... Like, Dad, what kind of bolts did you give me? Like, that's... I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. It's true. It's, that's, that's a good... Yeah, it's his dad's fault. Anyway, episode two, best friends for never. That's what I always say to Harlan. Um, <laughs> <laughs> a big portion of this episode is um, put to Peacemaker trying to escape the apartment building where he just blew up the woman um, and him uh, while the police surround it. Um, and he kidnaps a couple on his way out of the building. He doesn't kidnap them. He, like, ties them up. And then he goes yeah. back to the apartment and cries, and then he's reunited with Vigilante, and the episode ends with his dad getting arrested because Economos um, changed the license plate of his car to his dad. Who? Econ- uh, David. Um, no, don't call him that. I knew it. I just wanted him to say it. 
<laughs> okay, episode two. I think people complained about how it was a bit of a slow start of him. Oh, it's him trying to get out of the building for ages. But this show, you know, it's a lot of... It's, it, this episode's a lot of fun, I think. And I think... Him, I think the idea of him just really struggling to get out of this building really does a good job of grounding this show and being like, oh, these guys are on their own and they're like up right. against it. And I think that it worked in that element, you know? Um, I like this. I mean, I like I said, I think the pilot, in my opinion, is my favorite episode. So mm. this one isn't just because of that is not the best out of the bunch but it's still i still find myself wildly entertained by it i don't yeah. know any major issues uh and I, I i remember the first time i watched this when peacemaker gets back to his apartment he just lies in his bed and starts to cry i remember thinking like yeah. oh it's this kind of show mm-hmm. oh and, yeah that totally changed and like it's kind of out movie. of nowhere but like not in a way where it, it feels unearned Right. And then, you know, getting to meet Vigilante is a lot of fun. And then, you know, there's a lot of good setup here. Yep. Um, episode three. Episode Becker three. Goff dead. <laughs> because he's called, the, the character's called Goff. Okay. Um, in this episode, the team go and kill the senator and his family, or at least they try to. Um, Peacemaker is unable to kill the kids. So Vigilante steps in and takes over. Um, then they're all captured. Vigilante is unmasked and they're captured by the senator. And then they kill the senator and they see his butterfly leaving his body. This is the first time you actually see a butterfly. Right. Um, I think one of my, I like, I like have a couple issues with this show. Okay. And one of the major issues is why go, like why peacemaker just isn't told what the butterfly project is because that would have made things so much simpler i like i get it like oh he's supposed to be a killer anyway so it doesn't matter he was probably gonna find out one way or another yeah but but i do uh, enjoy, i do enjoy the, the the moment that he does when he's like trying to kill the kids and he can't and i'm like yeah but the, i guess i don't agree with that complaint as such because in the next episode, Goff admits what oh he's like, Oh yeah, I shouldn't have done that. That was pretty stupid. Like he realizes what it, it Yeah, was. it's true. So I don't really, you know, see it as much of an issue if it's like addressed within the show of being like, Oh, maybe I shouldn't have done that. But I think this is really strong moments of like peacemaking not being able to kill the family. And like there's good bonding moments. And then um Economos takes out Judo Master, which is fun. Yes. How do you and- feel about Judo Master? Who cares? Like, there's not really much there. Yeah, I'm like, with you. Who ca- Like, I don't feel strongly <laughs> about it either. I don't feel strongly enough to be like, I don't like this show because of, I like this is something I dislike about the show. Maybe this, his design is cool. Yeah. Judo Masters, but that's about it. Yeah, and um, Vigilante being unmasked is very funny. Yes. How he does his face stretches so he can't be recognized yeah. in a lineup. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else happens that episode, but not really. It's, it's a slower episode. I'm so wrong for thinking. Num- is that where we learn that um, Die Beard is like a rock fan, and he has that no, tattoo? That's later. Um, okay, in episode four we have the Chode less traveled. <laughs> uh... Okay. Nice. Um, Peacemaker goes to visit. Chode is like a type of penis. Um, yes, I get it. It's <laughs> so silly. It's so Peacemaker silly. Goes to visit his dad in prison, and Vigilante goes with him. And then when Peacemaker, and then Vigilante's like, "Yeah, I'm gonna have to go kill his dad," so he gets himself arrested. Peacemaker talks to his dad and tells his dad, "Oh yeah, it's my fault. You're in here, and like we framed you. And also, I'm a bit of a chode." He says something along those lines, and then. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, Judo Master escapes the his confinements and, and he has a short fight with Peacemaker where Adebayo shoots him. And uh, before he gets shot, he's like, hey, P- hey, Peacemaker, the butterflies aren't what you think they're. You know, that very cliche thing. And then um, Vigilante um, is stopped from killing 
um, the White Dragon because he gets to the moment and he's like, oh, I'm not going to hit you. Like he starts a fight with all of them, which is another great scene of him. Yeah, I love that scene. And he starts a conversation with them and then, um, yeah. And then he, then he ruins it all. Yeah. Because he says you're a bad dad. Yes. He does. But, you know, um, and that's that. I think that episode's a lot of fun. And I think the stuff in prison works well. And I think this, the, the setting up they do for the um, white dragon here and like his circle of white supremacy is interesting mm-hmm. stuff. Yes. Um, I'm trying to think of like other shining moments in the show. I like the, the fight between Peacemaker and Judo Master in this episode. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's this- the fight in the last episode between Judo Master and Hardcore and Vigilante is better in the last episode. I think that's a better fight. I think that one's a bit more fun. Vigilante is it's um hardcore and um No, I'm talking about when he they first get kidnapped in the episode before. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. That one is better. Yeah. Okay. Episode five, you ready for episode five? Yeah, five. Give me episode five. This episode is called Monkey Dory. There are no monkeys in this episode. I know. There is an ape, but there is no monkey, James Gunn. Uh, I think this is the second episode, episode, in my opinion. Um, This one's really good. Yeah, the team find it and infiltrate the source of the the food. Well, well, no, the distribution point for the food of the um, butterflies. So they go there and they kill a bunch of butterflies and there's a big fight and they kill a gorilla, a super gorilla. Um, which is a lot of fun. Economos kills it with a chainsaw. Yes, it does. Um, um yeah. What I, well, like, I love the chainsaw. I love I love the the X ray helmet and how he just walks in and starts shooting people. Right, especially there. There was really good build up to that, which was really yeah. just like two lines. It was like, "You chill, I'm chill," and then. And, yeah, and like, he and he, like he's like, you said you were going to be chill, and he's like, I was chill, and then I was like, yeah, he was very chill about the way he killed everyone. Like he was chill. Yeah. Like in his head, he's right. And then <laughs> this is when they all realize they enjoy rock, and you get like the drive there when they're all bickering and like hardcore. Like no right. one's listening to rock music, and then the, the drive back, they're all covered in blood and having fun, and then hardcore takes the sweet photo of them all. And that is I, a very sweet photo. I, I think it's a like that like bonding bit. Uh, I think is really solid stuff. Um, there's mm-hmm. more to this episode than just that one scene, though. So this is a very good episode. Um, Adebayo goes back to Peacemaker's house and plants evidence um, there. And then she goes back to their headquarters. She puts on Peacemaker's helmet and she realizes Mern is a butterfly. Did you see that coming? I can't remember. I didn't watch this show week to week because it came out a bit later in the UK. Oh, that's true. I watch it week to week. I did not see that coming. Yeah, I don't think I... Maybe, I mean, a lot, quite a bit of it was spoiled for me, but I don't think that was something that was spoiled. It was spoiled for you. you. Um, The cameo at the end. Oh. That was everywhere, though. Yeah, that's true. And then, like, I kept seeing pictures of in the last episode of Harcourt lying on the ground covered in blood. I was like, oh, she did. And then she didn't die. And I was like, oh, she's not dead. Oh, that would have been interesting if she died, but James Gunn wasn't going to kill his wife. They weren't. They weren't they were dating. Time. Didn't they start dating? I don't know. Well, they were married in 2021. Yes. Anyway. So. No, they married to 2022. It was this year, I think. I think we were together when they got married. Anyway. Hold on. Hold on. I'm okay. going to figure this out. Damn it. Gone. Dang it. Dang it. You were okay. right. Now wrong. we're on to the actual best episode of the show. Episode six. Mern <laughs> after reading. Okay. Um. So all the police show up at Peacemaker's apartment to arrest Peacemaker. Vigilantes there too. And as they're escaping, Mer Is it? No. Who what's the butterfly called? Goff. Goff. Um escapes its little glass and um makes one of the policemen a butterfly. And they do manage to escape because the policeman who's on 
um Mern's side shoots all of them which is a really good scene and they're like there's i that entire sequence is great of like there's the fun of eagerly just flying around kill like killing people right like that's yeah, lovely. we haven't talked about eagerly enough eagerly no. is i mean and the cgi on eagerly is like yeah, really confounding but that's just and, point. and then at the and then at the end there um, this entire like fun little getaway sequence is just cut off by this guy showing up and just shooting everyone. And like mm. in, the, in the Suicide Squad, I think that a lot of the murder was taken very lightly. And like here, right. it's really like during time of like, oh no, they're just killing people left, right, and center. And uh, my favorite thing about Peacemaker as a show overall is that um, it gave consequences to the Suicide Squad of like. Mm-hmm. It, it gave consequent like Peacemaker had, was a completely different person after killing um, Rick Flag, and so much of that was just just you know that's the entire like the entire crux of this show at the heart is the stuff he did at the Suicide Squad and I think giving right. like shining a light on that I think worked really well I agree with you anyway so the team find the location Oh, and you get the talk in this episode about how um, Mern's a butterfly and how he um, right, and how, how he left. Knew. You get like a bit, yeah. Can you get that? And, and Die Beard just moment. yeah doesn't and accept then, it. And yeah, and then the team find the location of the cow, which is the one making all the food for the butterflies. And then the White Dragon prepares to kill his son because he gets out of prison, and he's like, "I should have done what I did a long time ago." kill my fucking son and then like he goes home and there's all these white supremacists there and then um the butterflies take over the police station and they release peacemaker's diary mm-hmm. the, this... the butterflies taking over the police station is a really good sequence yeah i think this has maybe the two best scenes like emotion like the two best emotional scenes of the show this episode perhaps that being number one underrated i don't think i would i like picked up on this the first time around um i cannot remember the actor's name the guy who plays man um you know he's that you know you know who i mean the high no, i know who he is, but... free. um his his performance in the opening scene where he talks about having all the memories of man and he's like i wake up every day with all these memories in my head and i have to live with the fact that i still killed this man and like his performance there i think is phenomenal and like something i didn't pick up on the first time but for whatever reason the second time around it really struck me and i was like wow that is some very good acting there mm-hmm. and i like just having something to do with him being so stoic the entire time and then the second he shows that much emotion i'm like right wow and then maybe my best my favorite scene of the entire show I, like this one really hit with me the first time round is just Peacemaker being like deciding he doesn't want to kill anyone and then he sits down and plays the piano mm. and I think it's just such yeah. a simple and just it's a per- like n- I can't think not even like a su- I can't think of a moment in a superhero movie that just takes a step back from the plot and what's going on just to have such a uh, like a simple um but drawn out character moment like that like i think is so well done and i can't think of like it's something you don't see from this sort of thing at all i yeah it, when i first watched it, i was like wait really this is what we're going yeah. with because this yeah, yeah. seems so out of nowhere but it was really good like it's, it's it is because it's like i can't think of it happening in anything really like like this right like and i'm not saying every superhero film should have a bit where one of them just sits down at a piano and has a bit of a cry and plays a song. But, <laughs> you know, it's a really solid moment here. And I think, and then like, and then that leading on to the moment of like the, the diary being released and him watching the TV, I think is a great, um, mm-hmm. you know, uh, transition. Penultimate episode. Yes. Stop dragging my heart around. Are you enjoying these puns? I am enjoying these puns. I enjoy them when I was watching the show. Every time I go on in the next episode, I go, <laughs> and I continue. Okay. So at the very start of this episode, another great acting moment from John Cena, a phenomenal actor. You know, if we're ranking res- wrestlers turned actors, like well, it's kind of easy. There's three. Every, I, I mean, 
There's three everyone likes to talk about. Two of them are great, amazing actors, and then one of them's Dwayne Johnson. Yeah. Well, Dwayne Johnson's fine. He's no, but you know, fine. he doesn't act, does he? He kind of does. But <laughs> yeah. We haven't really seen anything where we're like, no, yeah. that's what I call acting. Yeah, and then like Dave Bautista and John Cena, I like they've. Tra- I think they've transitioned to actor while Dwayne Johnson is definitely still in the wrestler mindset. Yeah, as, I don't even know if Dwayne Johnson is necessarily in the wrestler mindset, but it's just kind of like he's in the it, action flame yeah. mindset. It's just something I've been thinking about today of him, like his one focus being like Black Adam fights Superman. Or no, there's a very interesting um thing I read recently about so do you know Dwayne Johnson's like, oh yeah, Black Adam's been in the work since 2008. Uh-huh. Uh, that's not exactly true. Dwayne Johnson has been in the talks to star in a DC movie since 2008, but he's like cycled for a few different characters. Like he was originally going to be Lobo and then he was going to be a Green Lantern. And then he settled on Black Adam. And when he was being a Green Lantern, he would talk about, oh, and I'll get to fight Superman. And it, it's like, it just appears like his one goal this entire time is to just to beat Superman in a fight. And that's kind of what, like, that's kind of like the wrestler mindset to me. Him be like, I want to fight Superman. That's an interesting take. I don't disagree with you, but that's just interesting. Yeah, again, a bit off topic, but you know, Dwayne, I've gone off Dwayne Johnson since all this Black Adam stuff. Like not even the film itself. Just I think, I think this movie, Pat take kind of ruined Dwayne Johnson's reputation. Yeah. And and it's not even the film itself. If the film was released and then that was it, no one would care. Right, but he was just such a interesting person during all of it, especially after. Yeah, and of him like leaking supposedly leaking numbers to. I filmed a YouTube video today where I ranked all my um twenty twenty two films, and there was a bit where I was like, Dwayne Johnson would beat me up if he watched this, and then I said something really mean about him. The th- Are we going to talk about this, or am I moving on? <laughs> no, no let's, let, 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 let's move on okay episode seven stop dragging my heart about i i got into the bit of saying john cena did a great acting moment here i don't think that's what you'd call them um and the oscar for best acting moment um we see a flashback <laughs> of chris killing his brother and then and then like you cut to um john cena in the bathroom crying about it um mm-hmm. and then everyone is on the run um, as like this diary was released there, we're all running at like Merns packing up, Adebayo and um, Harcourt are getting out there. And then Economos, Vigilante and Peacemaker all flee together. Um, and they, they're they like, we're going to go kill the cow now because like it's it's cow or never. Um, and as they're flying there, the white dragon in like an, a really cool Iron Man suit intercepts them. And there's a big fight. Um, Mern is killed by the police. Uh, um, and then his butterfly escapes, and then the butterfly is killed. And Harcourt was very sad about this. And then uh, there's a it's big fight sad. with the white supremacists, and um, Chris kills his dad. And then um, the whole and eagerly gets da- injured in this fight. And they all reunite in a vet. Yes, they do. When Ely got struck down, I uh, I'm, I almost burst through the screen to strangle the white dragon. Yeah, you knew he wouldn't die. No, I knew because James Gunn's got to have his cute little animal creature. But yeah, but yeah. I feel like just I think just people are sensible enough not to kill the cute animal, like especially as casually as that. Um, yeah, and like, oh, the scene of Chris killing his dad is a really just. It's just it's perfectly done of like the build up to him like throughout most of the show really trying to get his dad to like him mm. and then, like giving in and being like yeah never gonna get there i think that it means- also gives me some satisfaction that he did actually kill him like in any other superhero show be like no i can't kill you because that's what like that's not what a hero would do and i'm a yeah. hero but peacemaker doesn't and he his dad kind of deserves it that's they set yeah. the show up like that so yeah um it and felt it's- really deserved <laughs> And like it works so well with his whole um, no killing thing building up in the background as well. I think it adds a really interesting extra layer to him killing his dad. Mm-hmm. And like I think the whole that whole episode of like them running around the forest trying to get away from the white white supremacists is a lot of fun as well. And he has he has scratches on his face for the rest of the season. Yeah, 
on the raccoon. Okay, final episode of the show. It's cow or never. Um, after like all communicating at the vets for a bit and um, and him getting another hug from Eagly, they go to where the cow is and they they're planning to like sneak the cow's underground. So they'll sneak a helmet in, explode it, and then and then go in and attack. Um, so uh, Economos carries his the helmet in and on his way out he has to admit everything about his dye beard which I think <laughs> is a weird thing like that scene has always struck me um, not as like a great it's a really emotional scene yeah, but I don't I, think it's so stupid yeah. I don't think it's ever struck me as well this is a really amazing scene but it struck me as like wow they managed to do something interesting with this dumb joke that's been going on the entire season because it's However, not like it's every... not my favourite scene of dye beard in this episode yeah Every time die beard comes, every time like the phrase die beard comes up, it doesn't feel like it's building towards like an emotional moment like this. Right. Like, and I think it's interesting because it's not what you expect in it. I think it works well. And um, he gets the helmet in and then they, the, they all go, well, kind of. Harcourt, Vigilante and Peacemaker go and us attack. And then Harcourt and Vigilante get down, downed. Um, and then Peacemaker goes down um, and then he has a bit of a fight with Goff and Goff is like, hey, we're doing this to stop climate change or whatever. Uh, so do you want to join us? And then he's like, no. And then he um, shoots um, Adebayo through the cow. And then as they're leaving, the Justice League show up and he's like, oh, fuck you. And then I always forget that this show ends with Amanda Waller being unlike Task Force X being out. Oh, right. I forgot about that too. I was, I was like, what? And like, oh, it, yeah. it's the kind of thing just because I don't think you expect massive changes to canon in TV shows. Right. And really, like, the MCU haven't done that ma- massively. Um, trying to think of one. Maybe like giving Hulk a son. Yeah. Like, Maybe the end of winter soldier yeah i don't think like in, well, no, the thing is with the end of the falcon and the winter soldier is that that's kind of where everyone assumed the show was going it's like if if the falcon and the winter soldier didn't come out and then in the next i i really enjoy the falcon and the winter soldier i think it's under um but if that show didn't come out and then in avengers 5 sam wilson is captain america you wouldn't go oh how did that happen i wonder what happened in between Right, but then we have like the US agent. Yeah, that's true. I mean, like, like apart from introducing characters, they there's no been no like big. Yeah, you're right. Because like One Division also kind of ended where it started. Yeah, like if One Division wasn't a thing, we might be a little bit confused with the kids. Yeah, but when One Division came it. out to be like super yeah, yeah. evil and the Scarlet Witch, it would have been like. Oh yeah, like okay. the, one division kind of just ends where it started. But like, yeah, this is off topic. But P, yeah, Peacemaker and like Peacemaker went. I think what always like kind of strikes me out of this is that it's I think it's rare to see a superhero go through as like seismic character growth mm. as Peacemaker did. And like it kind of you know, apart from like origin stories, like obviously Thor starts off as a bad guy and then he becomes a hero. Like that's like that's done quite often but seeing like peacemaker go from like being just a guy who kills loads to actually changing as a character i think is interesting because it doesn't really happen in like superhero media at the moment it doesn't i this is definitely the outlier in a good sense yeah and like it's not something that's ever struck me and it's it's kind of like it's a it's a really good thing obviously but it's i never noticed it until i watched this and i was like oh yeah like they just all stay the same from film to film i will say the cameo at the end with the justice league yes has lost most of its like wowness factor because we can assume that like come five years none of these actors are going to be in it anymore half of them aren't even in the actual cameo yeah yeah. um and it, honestly it just feels like a joke like something it's a post that, that, at the well, time, that's what i enjoy about it though that like you bring the justice league in but you use it as a joke right it, it doesn't feel str- like the black adam post-credit scene yeah that is going to 
go down in history as like one of the most awkward scenes because like it's never going to happen. Yeah. But this one won't because it's at the end of the day, it's a joke that hits. So yeah. like it works in that regard. Yeah. I mean, it's still dumb, faceless Superman, which always annoys me. And Wonder Woman for some reason. Yeah. Well, yeah, it just it is. It, I remember, and like there was a whole thing. No Batman. Batman. They had someone in a Batman suit who was there when they. Filmed. I know. Like I remember, I remember all the controversy when that came out of like Lex being like, "Oh, they didn't," and they had all these characters. That, like Batman was there, but they were like, "No, that's." And I guess, I guess it was because the Batman came out in like two weeks after this show finished. So maybe yeah, there's like I don't want to show a different version of the character and. Maybe it's so it's weird that the entire Justice League is there besides Batman though. Yeah, and Cyborg. All right. Oops. How was Cyborg there? Too much CGI, I imagine. But they were all, they were all just silhouettes though. That's true. Maybe maybe you need the actor's permission and Ray Fisher wasn't wasn't going to get it. Maybe. Who knows? Who knows? Like it's a good scene. It works, and I think that like the little. Like um, exchange between Ezra Miller and Jason Momoa is funny as well. Yes, and fun fact: I like Jason Miller's scene was filmed on a Marvel um set. Wait, what? So basically, the the whole cameo thing, like they had the Justice League thing planned, but they were all going to be faceless, and then they managed to get Jason Momoa, and so they made him say a couple lines, like on the set of Aquaman two, and then very last minute they managed to get Ezra Miller in to say a couple lines, and at the time. Um, James Gunn was filming uh, Guns Galaxy 3. So he like spoke to Kevin Feige and he was like, oh, do you mind if we just like use like part of this set just to film one tiny little scene with Ezra Miller as The Flash? And Kevin Feige was like, yeah, okay. And then that's what they did. That's awesome. Kevin Feige's a real one for that. Mm. That, that, can, make, I, I that think... can be your video tomorrow. But... <laughs> Dude, Here's okay. how. The just... Wait, you're not gonna, you are not going to believe me. But that was literally what I was about to say. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, I know my video for tomorrow. Yeah. As long as, you know, you put me in the caption or something. Well, I'll think about it. Put me in the caption and be like, oh, Dean's Beans is a good, is it, is, you listen to the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> you should put the caption as at Dean's Beans, comma, you should listen to my podcast. And, I'll, and then I'll think about it. Okay. Okay. Anyway. Uh, I have two complaints about Peacemaker, I think, that are like okay. apparent ones. Number one, the butterflies as a villain, I think, are too similar to Starro. Yes. And just like another alien, like they're, obviously there's difference because all the butterflies have personality and obviously their motivations are completely different. But like at its core, I think they're like too similar. Um, but by the way they work. Yeah. There's like a big thing at the end that they all like rely yeah. on. And yeah. yeah. And it's like they take it's, over people's yeah, bodies take... and they're dead. Yeah. And like those people lose all emotion. They just all stand there together. You, yeah. And, um, and what's and your I, second complaint? I have a hot take for my second one. Okay. And it comes to a point about episode six where I'm a, like a little bit fed up of a lot of a lot of parts of the comedy of like, really? of like the it's mostly the vigilante peacemaker back and forth between those two characters well i it gets to the point where i'm kind of like yeah i get it i kind of, i get it <laughs> like the chihuahua bit yeah do you remember you did you not bust your butt laughing at that scene i don't think oh the, bit, the, scene, the scene where i kind of was like yeah i get your guys like this whole deal was when they were trying to interview golf and he says, "Oh, what's your favorite color? Is it this? Is it?" I'm like, "Yeah, I get, I get you to these two characters now." And I'm honestly, like, I disagree with you here, buddy. No, I knew me and were, my dad, me and my dad rewound that scene like at least five times when we were watching it because we were just it's laughing just, so hard. No, I think that scene would be funny for me if so much of the show wasn't that kind of comedy. <laughs> I'm a sucker for it. I. Yeah. You know, I well, might... that's the thing because that's the thing when it comes to the comedy, it's either, you know, and it's not like I'm like, oh, you're wrong. It's just you know, that's my opinion. And it's, I, it's comedy, so it's yeah. extremely subjective. But and like, I'm not saying the show isn't funny. I find the show very funny, but just 
I feel like there's it's I don't know what it I feel like I'm just like I feel like it gets to the point where it, I'm kind of like yeah can we get back to the story now because I get become so invested in the characters and the story and then when like some of the comedy happens I'm like this is kind of like taking a side step from that I think in my opinion the, sh- the show's greatest weakness is the cops before the butterflies like I could not care less about them yeah but I <laughs> They have a purpose, and I think they serve that. I is I don't think you see too much of them, right? And they serve that purpose, and I get it. Um, the show couldn't work without them. Yeah. However, I think it's just the show's greatest weakness. Not saying it's like terrible. It's not terrible, but it's just I don't know. Does it when the show cuts to the cops with before the butterflies, just kind of loses steam. Yeah. Yeah. I get that. I'm trying to think if there's, you know, any other complaints I have about this show. No, I, I, I that, that's really it. When I was watching the show, I'm like, okay, this is the only bad part. Not Going bad part. Into it, a big complaint I was going to have is that I'm <laughs> so fed up of superhero TV shows where there's like one or two superheroes with a team of normal people. And like, I still don't like it as a concept, but it works here. How do you mean? Like what's it's like, like what? the Flash when it's just like the Flash and all his friends. Oh, okay. You don't you don't get a superhero doing superheroing by themselves? Like they like need a team of like oh they need the tech guy and they need the sassy woman and they you know they need the mean fair. and like that kind of happens at, like it's kind of an, a very Arrowverse thing I think of like it happens in the Arrow and it happens in Flash and it happens in Supergirl and. But I feel like this show kind of gets away with it because Peter Grier actually does need all of that because he's yeah kind of stupid and doesn't have any powers. And like you know, the vigilante have that, and then like having Harcourt help out. I think that stuff works. Yeah, like giving them all something to do. Right at no point was I like this person couldn't be here, except the person that probably couldn't like didn't have to be there, but. They kind of the show recognizes that. Yeah. What's uh Amanda Waller's daughter's name? Um, Adebayo is that? Like, what's that? Adebayo. Name? Yeah. Right. I was thinking Adamame, and I'm like, that's not. That's she's not. She's a lot name. of fun. She is a lot of fun. Everybody in the main cast is a lot of fun. I really have a yeah, and it's funny when you get hardcore and economists who are in the Suicide Squad, and you're like, why are they in this show so much? You know, like you're like, why right. are they here? But it all worked because all... James Gunn had a crush on Harcourt, so he was like, she needs to be in here. <laughs> and Economos is a lot of fun as well here. I think he's he a is character. What was your favorite moment in the last episode? You never said. Oh, my favorite moment in the last episode. Oh, right when Economos <laughs> charges in and then just immediately terribly breaks his foot on the fence. Classic. God. I thought it was cute at the end of him with his pic- the picture of his mates. That was very cute. And then and and then you get the then... bit of them holding hands of um Harcourt and Peacemaker. Oh, if there's yes. a season two, would do you think anything would happen between those two? Um, if there was a season two, I wouldn't be surprised if they were broken up. It's kind of the way it's going, isn't it? And maybe like they get back together at the end again. I don't know. I don't know how. I, I think that's definitely like an end of season two thing where they have a little kiss or something like that at the end of the season. Yeah, probably. What do you want to see in season two? Um, I want to see. Um, more cool helmets. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. And I, I want to see Peacemaker actually be like admired as a hero. Yeah, because I think I, that'd be I, really cool. I would like to see like a human threat. Mm. Like choose a Batman supervillain or like some or like a Superman supervillain and just chuck them in there. Or maybe like Amanda Waller hires Bloodsport to kill Peacemaker because like Yeah, you could bring so, someone back. Or just like an equal to Peacemaker that like can ruin the team. Or like yeah. you know, something like that. Yeah, no, just I I want like a more, yeah, like a human threat and like I think uh, it also more... would be really 
superheroes. Like, we'll just add one more in. Like, Vigilante, Peacemaker, and add a, add a third guy. I think it'd be really interesting to, like, maybe if it, if like, it, it is Bloodsport, he kills Harcourt, and then Peacemaker is put up against this, again, like, moral dilemma where he has the option to kill Bloodsport, but then yeah. he gets, like, a flashback to Rick Flag, and then he's like, I can't do it, and then, like, yeah. you know, something like that, I think would be yeah, interesting. Yeah. I think, like, chucking a comic <laughs> superhero to go around, kind of like how Harcourt was, like, the um, like the foil and was, like, the straight man in the comedy. Mm. Chucking a third superhero that can hang out with those two, who is the straight man. Yeah. Because the thing is, in the weird, the, the thing about that duo is that, that Peacemaker becomes the straight man, which, like, obviously in every other... Oh, yeah, it's interesting how they did that. I didn't even really notice. Where like vigilante is the goofball and then peacemaker's the straight guy. So I think you chuck him a third guy. Because I don't think you'd want to go goofier than vigilante. So you just have to go Mm-mm. the other side. Oh my god. I love vigilante so much. Uh the Chihuahua scene. Now big conversation. Yes. Best episode of the show. And I d I don't I can can't go with you on with one, I don't think. I I I stick with one. I think four, five, or six. I would accept his answers. You don't accept mine. I, well, it just it it sets up the show so well. It gets you interested. Like pilots are hard. They're just hard, and I've seen too many lackluster pilots with great seasons of television. Yeah, but like I just there's nothing. I I think saying oh it's the best episode because a lot of other pilots are bad. I don't think is a valid argument. Just, I feel like if you would have asked me the first time I watched the show, I wouldn't have, it, it just, episode one left such a big impression on me because I forgot how, what yeah. I was getting into with this show. Yeah. It's just for and, me, I wouldn't be able to say episode one because it doesn't have any of those big emotional moments, which are kind of my favorite thing about the show. But it has such good comedic moments, which is like mm, there's no my favorite part about the show. Less there's, comedy in there. It doesn't have vigilante, but it, it's so funny. If I if I wasn't to say episode one, I would probably say episode seven. The penultimate one. Are we do you want to agree on episode seven? Sure, we'll agree on episode seven. Okay, so now we have two more questions. Yes, what are your two questions? What is better, the best episode of Peacemaker or the best episode of WandaVision? It's not even a best episode of Peacemaker. Yeah, without a question. Of that, of I... What did we say? I don't know. To be fair, Maybe like... You won that argument because I said episode two was the best one. And then I think you said... Episode five or something? I think you said, is episode five is the one where Pietro is introduced. Oh, yeah. maybe I said that one. I think you said episode five, because then you get the argument at the end. Yeah. This yeah. Um, I would say the worst episode is Peacemaker is equal to the best episode of WandaVision. Yeah. Yeah. But Peacemaker is very consistent, I think. Like, I couldn't That's true. what the worst episode is. So, like, I, I mean, not, like, I think you're right, but I think saying that is a bit... Um... So easily the best episode of Peacemaker is better than the best episode yeah. of One Division. Okay, now this one might be might like you know you might struggle a bit with this question. Okay, what do you prefer, One Division or Peacemaker? Mm-hmm. I don't know. What's what's your thought? I'll go along with what you think. I think that the. The, 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 oh, uh, hmm. give me, give me, give me some time to think. <laughs> uh, Good one. Good one. Is Peacemaker. Um, yeah, this is Peacemaker. One Division isn't bad. I don't want to, you know, I enjoy it. It's okay. One Division is good, but Peacemaker is great. Yeah, I think I would go as far as saying One Division is really good and Peacemaker is amazing. Yes. Uh, really good is a little bit much for One Division, but. Yeah, okay, it does have a crap finale. We have one final thing to it's really good in um in in if we're talking about Marvel shows. Marvel Disney yes. shows. Okay, we have one final thing to decide. 
What are we talking about next month? Oh yeah. I have one. Next month will be February. What? What's um, your suggestion? Ba-da-dum, bum, bum. Ba-da-dum, ba-da-dum. Oh, Mandalorian, really? Season three what? is March first. Oh, so, so are we watching season one and two? Would you do one and two, or would you do one and and then two? A month later, I think you can do one and two. I think, or just one. Is that like going against? Is that going one against... and two? In one, let's yeah, yeah. And you know, while we're at it, let's throw in the Boba Fett episode. No, no, nah, that's too much. I'm it's not too much, but let's. Oh, sorry, the but book book that book leads, that brings us. Oh, sorry, the one episode. Yeah, well, there's two. Okay, I, I, we could we, we can talk about the minutia about this. Okay, the minutia. I'll start watching the Mandalorian, and then we'll see. Okay. Well, that's what we'll be doing the first week of Feb. We'll be doing the Mandalorians, but but I think I'm I'm saying this now. It's not going to matter because neither of us are going to remember I said this, but I will still say it next time. I think we still look at both series of the Mandalorian as separate entities. Okay. For the of stuff. Okay, that's fair. But yeah, okay. Uh, that's all I. Oh, uh, one question for you. Okay. So do you know, like, um, Mern, mm-hmm. how, like, he just flew into someone, like, and then, like, he, like, his personality was now in, in control of that person. Yeah. If he found the worst person he ever found was, like, Mussolini, who's, like, a dictator from some European country, how do you, how do you think he would sound as, like, part of the team in Peacemaker? I love something like... <clears throat> Mamma mia, I am a butterfly. Oh, you're admitting okay. to it, Goff. I knew it all along. Oh, oh. No. oh mamma mia. <laughs> Shoot him in the head. Anyway, <laughs> thanks for listening. Adios. Adios, guys. We love you. Hey, don't speak for me. I love I you. love all the listeners. Oh, yeah, the listeners too. That's who I was talking to. Oh, who, you, who do you love? Doesn't matter. We're yeah. we're past it. Okay. Um. See you. Ne- what are we doing next week? Who cares? We'll talk about it. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Bye.